Hey kiddos, today we're still, we're continuing with Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We're on chapter 10, the mock turtle. So remember when we get to the pictures, if you would like to, you can pause and then um, hit play when you're ready to resume the story. And I'm sorry if you hear a little background noise from the dogs. But anyway, chapter nine, the mock turtle story. I'm so glad to see you again, said the Duchess as she tucked her arm into Alice's and walked, and they walked off together. Alice was very glad to see she was in a good mood and thought to herself that it was the pepper that had made her so mean when they met in the kitchen. You're thinking about something, said the Duchess, and that makes you forget to talk. I can't tell you just now what the moral of that is, but I will remember it in a bit. Maybe it doesn't have a moral, Alice said. Tut, tut, child, said the Duchess. Everything has a moral. And she squeezed closer to Alice's side. Alice did not like being so close to her. The Duchess was very ugly and she rested her chin on Alice's shoulder and it was a very pointy chin. Alice did not want to be rude, so she put up with the pain as best she could. The game is going much better now, Alice managed to say. Yes, it is, said the Duchess. And the moral of that is, oh, tis love, tis love that makes the world go round. Somebody said, Alice whispered, that it's done by everybody minding their own business. Ah, well... It means much the same thing, said the Duchess, and the moral of that is take care of the sense, and the sounds will take care of themselves. How fond she is of finding morals in things, Alice thought to herself. I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't put my arm around your waist, said the, du the Duchess said after a pause. The reason is that I'm worried about the temper of your flamingo. Should I try? He might bite, Alice cautiously replied. Very true, said the Duchess. Flamingos and mustard both bite. And the moral of that is birds of a feather flock together. Only mustard isn't a bird, Alice remarked. Right as usual, said the Duchess. What a clear way you have of putting things. It's a mineral, I think, said Alice. Of course it is, said the Duchess. There's a large mustard mine near here, and the moral of that is, the more there is of mine, the less there is of yours. Oh, I know, exclaimed Alice, who didn't really hear her last remark. Mustard is a vegetable. Thinking again, the Duchess asked, with another dig of her pointy little chin, I have a right to think said Alice sharply, for she was beginning to feel a little uncomfortable. Of course, said the Duchess, just about as much right as pigs have to fly. And the more the Duchess's voice died away and her arm was her arm that was linked with Alice's began to tremble. Alice looked up and there stood the queen in front of them with her arms folded, frowning. A oh, fine day, your majesty, the duchess began in a low, weak voice. I'm warning you, shouted the queen. Either you or your head must be off. It's your choice. The duchess made her choice and was gone in no time. Let's go on with the game, the queen said to Alice. Alice was much too frightened to say a word. She slowly followed the queen back to the croquet ground. The other guests were resting in the shade, but the moment they saw the queen, they hurried back to the game. The whole time they were playing, the queen never stopped arguing with the other players and shouting, off with his head, or off with her head. What? After a while, the soldiers, who had to stop being arches, 
had taken away all of the players to be executed except for the king, the queen, and Alice. Then the queen said to Alice, have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, said Alice. I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from, said the queen. I never saw one or heard of one, said Alice. Come on then, said the queen, and he shall tell you his story. As they walked off together, Alice heard the king say in a low voice to everyone, you are all pardoned. They came to a griffin lying fast asleep in the sun. If you don't know what a griffin is, look at the picture. Get up, you lazy thing, said the queen, and take this young lady to meet the mock turtle. I must go back and finish my game and she walked off, leaving Alice alone with the griffin. Alice did not like the looks of the creature, but she thought it would be much safer to stay with it than to go with the queen. The griffin sat up and rubbed its eyes. Then it watched the queen until she was out of sight. It chuckled, what fun, said the griffin. What is the fun, Alice asked. Why she, said the griffin. It's all make-believe she never executes anybody. You know, come on. They did not go far before they saw the mock turtle sitting sad and lonely on a little ledge of rock. Alice could hear him singing as if his heart were breaking. Why is he so sad? She asked the griffin. The griffin answered in almost the same words that he had used before. It's all make-believe. He doesn't got no sorrow, you know. Come on. So they went up to the mock turtle who looked at them with large eyes full of tears, but said nothing. This young lady, said the griffin, she wants to know you, she do. I'll tell her about myself said the mock turtle in a deep hollow tone. Sit down, both of you, and don't speak a word till I've finished. So they sat down and nobody spoke for some minutes. Once, said the mock turtle with a deep sigh, I was a real turtle. Then there was a very long silence. Alice was ready to get up and leave and tell the mock turtle, thank you, sir, for your interesting story but she could not help thinking there must be more to come. So she waited and said nothing. When we were little, the mock turtle went on at last, still sobbing a little now and then, we went to school in the sea. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him tortoise because he taught us. Yes, we went to school in the sea, though you may not believe it. I never said I didn't, interrupted Alice. You did, said the mock turtle. Hold your tongue, added the griffin before Alice could speak again. The mock turtle went on. We had the best education. In fact, we went to school every day. I've been to school too, said Alice. You needn't be so proud of that. With extras, asked the mock turtle. Yes, said Alice. We learned French and music. And washing, said the mock turtle. Certainly not, said Alice. Ah, then yours wasn't a really good school, said the mock turtle in a tone of great relief. How many hours a day did you do lessons? Asked Alice in a hurry to change the subject. 10 hours the first day, said the mock turtle, nine the next and so on. What a curious plan, exclaimed Alice. That's the reason they're called lessons, the griffin remarked, because they lessen from day to day. This was a new idea to Alice. She thought about it before she said, then the 11th day must have been a holiday? Of course 
course it was, said the Mock Turtle. And what did you do on the 12th? Alice went on eagerly. That's enough about lessons, said the Griffin. The Griffin interrupted in a very dead, decided tone. Tell her something about games now. That's it for chapter nine. Let me know what you think is going to happen in chapter 10, the lobster quadrille.